Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Managing Costs After COVID-19. Everyone is in listen-only mode. This will just ensure that everyone has a great experience. Um, we will be accepting Q&A at the end. So if you think of anything during the presentation, you can just drop your question in the Q&A box and we will go over as many as we can at the end. This is being recorded, so we will send this out to you tomorrow. And without further ado, um, my name is Amber Smith. I'm the Client Marketing Specialist here at Jackrabbit. Um, today we have Sean Deaver presenting. He is a CPA and owner of Express Payroll. And then on the line, we also have Tammy Colvin, who is our Software Training Specialist, AKA the Jackrabbit Guru, as I call her. So if you have any questions on um, anything that reflects in your Jackrabbit database, um, she will be here to answer that for you. And before I let Sean take over, I just want to point out some resources that we update on a regular basis. We have two Facebook pages. Um, one is our company page where all things Jackrabbit are posted. And then we also have a user group that is for Jackrabbit users only. This is a great place to network and bounce ideas off of each other um, with people that use the same software as you. Also, we have a COVID-19 resource center and a road to reopening resource center. Both of these are located in your Jackrabbit Help Center. And they're a great, great way to guide you through this unprecedented time. And that information is updated on a regular basis. And last but not least, we have the blog, which is at www.jackrabbitclass.com slash blog. Um, we have an ultimate guide to reopening a business after a closure and lots of content as you needed is added there each week. So I'm going to stop my share and hand it over to Sean. Does that work? It's looking great. Awesome. Well, Amber, and uh, thanks for thanks for uh, the you know putting pulling us together. Of course, number one, and the introduction, and happy to be here again with our Jackrabbit friends. Um, today, I I thought I'd pull together a few slides. Uh, spoke with the folks. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions over the last few months, and then and then obviously more specifically, few weeks on on numerous things such as. You know the new recent government uh, advantage um, stimulus packages that are coming out. You know what to do in the summer, how to handle the reopening in the fall, and so on. And obviously, every state is handling things differently with reopening at different times, depending upon your business um, and what you offer. You know whether it's daycare or gymnastics or swimming or dance or music or karate. You know <clears throat> you might be falling at different diff into different stages. So. I thought it would be helpful to, uh, you know, put, pull together a few things and, um, you know, kind of kind of help out with uh, managing costs, you know, and take care of that. So first, just about myself, for those of you that haven't, haven't attended on some of my other uh, Jackrabbit webinars, um, my name is Sean Deaver. I'm a CPA and financial planner, first and foremost. We, uh, my firm, uh, which is, uh, can be found at DeaverCPA.com services about uh, five about 400 uh and just about 400 clients specifically in the gymnastics dance swimming daycare and music uh, theater type industries we specialize in those industries across the united states so this is a lot of information that i've been pulling together and sharing with my clients directly um uh, you know, i'm sure you're also speaking with your professional advisors but again <clears throat> it should be uh, fairly relevant uh, in addition, uh, I own uh, Express Payroll, <clears throat> which is a payroll service. It's a full service solution. You can find our website at express-payroll.com. And uh, this uh, particular payroll solution links directly with Jackrabbit. So if you're a Jackrabbit user, and especially if you're using the time clock, will the two speak to each other? So we years ago, we uh, formed a partnership and, <clears throat> and uh, have a nice solution that helps save a lot of time, but also a lot of money uh, for, for clients. So please uh, feel free to check out both of those. In addition, um, you know, since uh, I myself uh, have been servicing these industries for so long, I'm also an investor 
in a number of gymnastic schools, dance schools, swimming schools across the U.S. <clears throat> so one thing that I do specifically is I offer business coaching. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about an offer that I have for those of you live here today um, toward, towards the end on, uh, on any of these. But uh, if, you, if you want further information on those, please don't hesitate to, again, check out my websites or uh, I'll also have my email for you at the end. Okay, kind of talking about the, uh, the state of affairs and, you know, how things are going. <clears throat> you know, I, I thought when I was pulling these slides together, you know, it's interesting the three primary industries that we serve are gym, dance, and swim. And, you know, gym and gymnastic schools and dance schools, this time of year, as we, as the warm weather approaches and we get closer to the end of the normal school year, you know, these industries are starting, I would call their wind down phase. You know, we move into summer programming or perhaps offering summer camps. And uh, swimming is the exact opposite, which uh, this is kind of their ramp up stage. You know, the spring, uh, for those, especially if you have uh, a season, if you live in an area with four seasons, this is really a time where, you know, swimming schools are ramping up. So as, um, you know, as these businesses have been impacted, all of a, every small business for that matter has been impacted for the most part with the current outbreak and the virus. Um, you know, it's interesting to see and, and how, how, how it's impacting each of these industries. So it's things that we should be thinking of you know, how we can uh, think about, you know, how we handle these types of things. For example, dance did a fantastic job uh, specifically when things, um, you know, the outbreak took place and we had to close down. The dance schools, we noticed, pivoted immediately and started offering online classes and curriculums. And I have many clients, many clients that um, have not even skipped a beat, you know, maintain full revenue, full uh, curriculum. Uh, full students, so they've really been able to pivot nicely and and maintain business. So uh, gymnastics, you know, also tried to do some online curriculum, uh, wasn't as successful and understandably so. Um, so you know they they're in a little bit different position. And then as I mentioned, swim schools are starting their ramp up phase, so they're also different. So we we're kind of blocking and tackling each of these industries independently. But hopefully the presentation I have later in the slides will be applicable to all. But of course, you do need to think about your own business and state of affairs while putting any of these things into place. Um, you know, the nice thing about all of these is that, you know, families, children especially have been locked up and uh, I say locked up, you know, have been sitting, sitting uh, at home. Many of them have been idle. Many of them are looking for things to do. Moms and dads are looking to get their children back into activities and sports. You know, as, a, as an owner of a gymnastics school, for example, typically our summer is our slowest period. And uh, we're actually, you know, really hoping and marketing to make this a very uh, busy period because kids have been stuck at home. You know, they've been doing Zoom everything. So we're really trying to market to them separately to see how we can continue to uh, take advantage of these different times in the new normal, if you will. So the presentation, again, <clears throat> will focus a little bit on what we can do now, how to prepare for the short term, and then preparing for the future. Okay, so um, as small business owners, uh, you know, many of us need to focus, we've been focusing on a lot of different things. We've been, you know, getting our businesses ready. A lot of us have been focusing on COVID-19 and you know, what type of uh, chemical sprays to get in place and what type of uh, cleaning agents we need to do and how we're going to focus on opening up, um, you know, under the new normal, if you will. And I'm going to, I'm not talking, I'm not coming at this from a CDC perspective or a six foot distancing perspective or what chemicals to use. There's enough of that information out there. I'm focused solely on the business side. Uh, of course, I care about all those things. They're all very relevant, you know, having installing video cameras. If keeping your parents in the parking lot, if those were choices that you've made. Um, again, my focus here is really gonna be focused on the interior, if you will, and how, what things that we can control ourselves. Um, and then without, without any, uh, it, you know, should be, it should be, um, I shouldn't even have to say this, but I will. Uh, you know, you need to make sure that you're talking with your professional advisors constantly. Uh, your lawyers, if you have them, if you don't get one, uh, certainly your CPAs. Um, you know, these are, these are trusted business advisors that, you know, should be able to help you during these times. 
Um, obviously, I know a lot of people are using, as, uh, as Amber had mentioned, the Jackrabbit sites and the blogs and the, and the Facebook groups. I've also set up a Facebook group to help you know, a lot of clients and, and even people outside my media clientele. Um, so obviously, try to reach out and get as much information as you can. But always remember that your, um, you know, your CPA and your lawyer, those should be people that you lean on most and, and importantly uh, and, and first. So I know from my CPA firm, um, you know, we've extended hours. We work seven day, we have a seven day a week staff on now. We've been taking uh, consultations through Zoom, uh, through phone. Um, so we are, we are reaching, you know, we're, we are on top of the guy, all the guidance that's come out. Um, and trying to help our clients just really, you know, work through the new normal and see how things are going. And I envision, uh, you know, normally as an accountant, my heavy lifting is done in mid-April. Um, I, I and, and then I get to take a little bit of time off. I haven't been able to do that. Number one, there's nowhere for me to go because nothing's open. But number two, you know, this is clearly not a time to be taking my foot off the pedal. <clears throat> and I envision, um, you know, uh, can, staying consistent with this work schedule for many months to come just to kind of, again, help, help my clientele and as many folks as possible to, to weave through the, uh, the, the new craziness here. So with that, um, you know, when it comes to attorneys, I, if you don't have one, I suggest getting one. And, um, you know, what, what I would certainly do is start focusing in on, you know, there's two ways of thinking about attorneys. Number one, you need to make sure that you're looking at anything that you're responsible for, um, you know, for example, have them reviewing your rent and lease agreements, see if there's any clauses in there to help during these crazy times. Also, should you be extending rent and leases? Um, should you be, you know, redoing these, these agreements? Um, equipment leases, if you have a, a lease with, with an equipment provider, is there something you can be doing to defer payments or get out of payments or renegotiate or cancel out on the lease if you don't need it any longer. Similarly, uh, have them review contracts for future service type things. You know, if you've rented a venue, for example, a recital, or uh, maybe you have a year-end show or something like that. Maybe you've um, booked a trip. Uh, you know, a lot of dance schools go down to Disney. Um, I know a lot of them had uh, pre-booked these trips. Money was um, provided to the vendor. And now they're trying to get that money back. So um, help have your attorneys help you weed through these types of things. Similarly, with um, you know any type of service that you might be considering signing up in the future, obviously have your attorney go through these as well. And uh, one other item would be insurance. You know, there's a lot of discussion right now on uh, number one: Do I have uh, insurance? Do I have the right insurance? Do I have enough insurance? There's been a discussion about uh, business interruption insurance, and if you have it. Um, there's a lot of new legislation being looked at or being discussed in whether uh, a slowdown due to COVID should be captured in that business interruption. Um, so have your attorneys help you digest these types of things. Similarly, on the opposite side, as the provider of the service, you know, you want to make sure that you're having an attorney look at your liability waivers um, for, for students coming in, in the future, as well as maybe parents who might be coming in for uh, the, the visitation room or, you know, your, your, uh, your waiting room or things of that nature. Some, if you offer summer camp or daycare type service, um, these would be, you know, do you want to have additional uh, liability protection put in there, additional waivers put in there. Uh, similarly, if you have employee contracts, if you have anything like that, if you're concerned about anything, these are all conversations that you want to make sure you're having with your attorney. Um, next would be your accountants. Now, your accountants should really be, you know, I, uh, I consider my clients to be my best friends. You know, they, they call me at nighttime. They call me on the weekends. They call me at home. Um, <clears throat> I was kidding there, but <clears throat> many of them are very close friends, of course. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they have my personal cell phone number and they can reach me anytime uh, that they need to. And I'm, I'm happy to do that for my clients because I understand, you know, obviously what's going on. And when there's emergency situations, um, you know, they need someone to lean on. And, I, and I'm, I'm very happy that they consider me as part of that, you know, uh, small group of, of team members that they can do that with. So if you don't have a CPA, I would highly suggest that you get one. Um, if, <clears throat> if you don't have a CPA that you understand or <clears throat> that can communicate well with you, or that understand your business model, I would consider shopping around for a new one. Um, that, that's just, again, someone who needs to be there <clears throat> to help you 
you know, work through these situations. And, uh, you know, God, I hope to God we don't ever have to have these conversations again. I hope this is a once in a lifetime type of thing. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, they should be there for you in all types of situations. So uh, just, you know, keep, keep that in mind. And again, make sure you have the right uh, players in your court on your team. Um, some of the things that I'll discuss in the following slides are, you know, uh, as an accountant <clears throat> and things that I've provided to my clientele is, uh, of course, understanding and digesting the new programs for small business owners, specifically the CARES Act that came out, uh, the FFs, the Family First Coronavirus Response Act. There were a lot of other things that I'll get into a little bit of detail on. Um, I'm helping a lot of my clients with budgeting and forecasting, going through multiple exercises, multiple scenarios. I'm also talking about cost management. And then <clears throat> something else that we offer to our clientele and uh, you know something that I'm always happy for them to at least you know run by me is things like pricing, discounting, current and future programming, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So these are you know again I would tap your accountant as much as you can. These individuals are well versed most likely, and um, should be able to help you on many fronts. So uh, remember us, and and again make sure. <clears throat> um, that you come to us as often as possible, especially in times like these. So let me talk about some, some new programs that were released um, and uh, you know, just kind of some high level summary here. You know, first and foremost, it's important to understand that approximately 50% of all small businesses in America have fewer than 500 people. Um, all of my clients have fewer than 500 people. So I, I service, all the ones that I service, certainly fit into this small business definition or small business category. So it's a very important that um, you know, government is keeping a close eye on you guys uh, because you do represent over 50% of business in America. Um, you, know, you represent half the jobs, if not more, uh, that exist in America. So if small business owners go out of business, then that obviously has a, a global or certainly a, a, a massive a domestic impact, if not global impact. Um, so with that, the government was kind enough to quickly <clears throat> put together some very, um, you know, record in record breaking time, some very important and major programs that have never been released this quickly in history. The first one that came out back in March was called the Family First Coronavirus Response Act. It came out really quickly and it provided paid sick leave and Family Medical Leave Act or FMLA for small business owners, those with 50 or fewer employers. Um, they also, employees rather, they also offered an unemployment benefit to all states and uh, um, whether people would typically, you know, many people typically would not be eligible for unemployment benefits. And this act provided an extension so that more people than normal would be able to, uh, to get a, so, a benefit through those programs. So I'm not gonna go into detail. I've done presentations earlier with Jack Rabbit and other venues on the specifics of these programs, but I just wanted to highlight these so you know that they existed. They still exist, they're, still, they're, they're through the end of the year. Um, so if you have any questions on these, or if you want further information on these, or if you think it might be applicable or eligible, certainly again, speak with your professional advisor for additional help. And the next uh, stimulus package that passed was called the CARES Act. And this one has gotten a ton of um, uh, you know, press and news, and many of us took advantage of it. I've done, again, several webinars and presentations on this. In particular, there were two programs, the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, otherwise known as PPP and EIDL. And these um, act, these were both major parts of the, uh, the CARES Act. Um, they've been, they've, they were rolled out back in early to mid-April. Um, they are really, there was hundreds of billion, $600 billion associated with the PPP alone. And I have thousands of clients, we, you know, we have a few thousand clients on the payroll side and many, if not all, I shouldn't say all of them, but many of them, uh, any, every, all of them that applied, um, as far as I can tell, had received PPP funding. Now, some people didn't apply. It wasn't appropriate for them. So obviously, that's, that's a different scenario. But the ones that did apply, um, and many of them also applied for the IDLE as well, and had received uh, funding there too. So these acts really were helpful in giving us some short-term capital. Um, eight weeks was the PPP. The IDLE was a little different, um, but it helped string us together for a little while. 
especially if we didn't have uh, revenue coming in or we had a reduction in revenue. Um, the intent of the program, it was eight weeks, and you know we all thought that the world would be back to normal in eight weeks or a lot closer to normal in eight weeks. As we know, eight weeks is about uh, two weeks away now from those that first entered the program. We're about week six. And <clears throat> as we all know, state by state, most states are starting to loosen and open up business. Now, I don't anticipate we're going to go from uh, you know, zero to 100 degrees overnight or zero to 100 miles an hour overnight. It's going to take us a little while to build. But certainly these programs did help. Uh, you know, get us limp, help us limp along during that that slow, if not a completely dry period. Um, in addition, with the CARES Act, there were the employee retention tax credit, and there were additional tax credits, payroll tax credits, and payroll relief that was provided um, over the, throughout that that act. So again, if if you haven't heard of this, or if you haven't taken advantage of it, um, <clears throat> then uh, certainly make sure you're checking in with your professional advisors. By the way, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I do know that there are people on the call that are non-US and the last two slides I've talked about are US uh, employers. Uh, I don't know or have any insight into uh, outside of the US as to any type of programs that were put in place. I presume there were also you know, benefits or programs or tax reductions or so on, but I, I unfortunately I'm not familiar with them. So these slides do specifically talk about um, the uh, <clears throat> the U.S. only. Um, in addition, in for those of you who haven't been uh, made aware, there's something called Stimulus 4.0 being worked on right now. <clears throat> um, it is not what everyone, there, a lot of people think there's something actually currently uh, drumming up, <clears throat> and there was something that was passed in the House. Uh, the Democrats passed something, but that was immediately shot down. That will not go to the floor. Uh, it, it, it will be vetoed if even even talked about um, so if you heard anything in there, please don't get your hopes up if there was something in there that you liked. Stimulus 4.0 will likely come at the middle and or end of the summer. <clears throat> it will be heavily related to the individual. I don't know that there will be anything in there for business. In other words, there'll be more unemployment. There'll be more stimulus checks like we had received or, or were in the process of receiving. Um, there, will, there will be very little PP, you know, if any, I don't think there'll be an additional PPP funding or anything like that, at least not at this stage, nothing looks to be included in there. So uh, more to come on that, but <clears throat> again, that will be coming forward. Uh, again, just staying on with the accountant for, for a moment, uh, you know, as a CPA and, and now as a business owner, you know, my suggestion is, you know, you need to really, really know and understand your numbers. Um, knowing your numbers and your, and when I mean numbers, I'm talking about your financials, your, your, your financial records, it's a good idea, regardless of whether you're in a recession and or pandemic, but in a recession or times like today, the margin for error becomes a lot narrower. So really important that you have a good handle on these, that you're discussing these with your professional advisors on a regular basis if you're not comfortable interpreting them. Um, you want to make sure that your bookkeeping and uh, financials are prepared on a monthly perspective. You want to make sure that they're current. Um, you always want to be able to see exactly where you stand financially, especially in times like these. And as I get further into my presentation, I'll, I'll show you some examples of why that's important. Um, but this way, you you know you have an understanding of where you're overspending and so on. You know, in time when times are are, are well, or times are good, and the last several years have been, we're flowing in money, we're swimming in money, um, and you know there's real you know it's always important to have an idea and a handle on your monthly financials, but if you overspent something or if you bought a piece of equipment that you didn't need, but eh, no big deal, I'm making more money than I ever have before. Well, sloppiness with financials sometimes, you know, it's not as big a deal um, because again, we're making a ton of money, but now that times are tough and maybe money, there's no money coming in at all. It, the importance of having a handle on these is obviously most important right now. So um, make sure Again, that you have a good handle of everything and where things are going. And um, I would start using that information to start working up budgets and forecasts. I would be preparing these with your professional help uh, for short, mid, and long term. And, and when I say professional help, you don't need to hire a CPA to do this. Many of you can do this on your own. doesn't need to be perfect. There's always room and margin for error. At the end of the day, 
you could hire the the smartest most expensive you know cpa or a budget person in the world and i'll guarantee you he or she won't get it right because there's always room for error unless you know every variable is known defined perfectly there's no way you're going to um you know be be 100 percent correct so don't hesitate to make mistakes here it's just a matter of getting involved getting an understanding of the numbers, getting these projections out there, seeing where you're at, um, you know, working again, a short term, midterm and a long term budget and forecast to see how you're how you're working. You know, <clears throat> on my uh, in the clubs that I own, to give you a point of reference, we had done a short term budget and forecast. This is back in uh, April, you know, end of end of March, early April. We did one, how, how April and May would look. We were really anticipating opening up in June. Um, I'm in Massachusetts and we are, we've been told we will not open until July. So over the course of the last six weeks, eight weeks, I have uh, done additional forecasts. And I've said, well, let's, let's take a look at forecasts and budgets now, assuming I don't open until September. It's kind of a midterm type of scenario. And then I've even gone as far as saying, well, God forbid, what happens if I can't open until January? So I have all three of these. Those are uh, you know, short, mid, and long term for me. Um, and and what, what it would look like, what type of money I have to have reserved if I need any type of loans or additional financing. What will I need? What can I control this way, that way? <clears throat> and these are all things that should be going into a, a working budget or forecast. Uh, in addition, when it comes to knowing your numbers, you should uh, have a full and complete understanding of your expenses, um, as well as cash reserves, again, to determine how long you can survive. And uh, uh, just a little saying we always use is always measure what you treasure. So make sure that you know your numbers. One other thing I want to uh, bring everyone's attention, if you haven't heard this already, tax payments were delayed, delayed in the U.S., tax payments were deferred until July 15th. So personal, corporate, all those taxes were all deferred until the July 15th timeframe. And uh, along with that would be your quarterly estimated tax payments. In the US, our tax payments are due first in April and then in June, and both of those first and second quarter were delayed. We are advising, strongly suggesting to clients um, to consider not making those first and second payments quarterly payments. Those are estimates only. Um, so make sure you check in with your CPA or professional, the folks who help with your tax return on those. Um, but we are uh, considering deferring those payments completely or if uh, or reducing. Um, obviously, if a school's open, I have a, a, a dance school client I was talking with yesterday who uh, thus far year to date hasn't skipped the beat, no pun intended. She, um, she has a full client, uh, client list. Um, has done has collected uh, full revenue in March, April, and May, as well as June. She will not be having a recital, so that will impact her financially. But uh, at this stage, we're going to suggest that she makes her first quarterly payment um, because the estimate is that uh, you know based on that she's got full revenue, full profitability, and things are looking good. As we get further into the year, though, obviously we may cut that short or cut it in half or maybe defer it completely. So again, just wanted to make sure draw attention to everyone that estimates are only estimates and uh, you can certainly defer and or not pay them at all or pay something less. Okay, when it comes to finances, I always like to um, you know, give some high level information and talk about our money and where it goes. And you know, if we think about our sales or our tuition or our income <clears throat> coming in, as 100% of our pie, then people always like to know where does our pie go and how does it get divvied up. And for the most part in the gym, swim, dance, theater, music, karate industries, karate might be slightly different. Um, <clears throat> um, but in those uh, original industries, even, even childcare for that matter, um, typical pie chart would look something like this. Uh, rent would, or, or mortgage, if, you know, with property tax, would um, include somewhere around 20% of everything we make goes to those categories. Labor is uh, somewhere between 30 and 45%, um, depending upon your industry, and I'll break those down a little bit further later. Um, so, you know, get, let's say on average 40%. Uh, profit, the green slice at the top, typically runs about 10% for these industries. 
and our other expenses, which basically is anything other than these. So utilities, marketing, professional fees, merchant fees, insurance benefits, legal and professional, whatever, all assume or consume about the remaining 30%. So when it's important to kind of look at this, and I like to look at it as a picture because now I, I know, you know, what of these items can I start to carve into or adjust or, you know, deal with so that I can survive in months when I'm either not bringing in revenue at all or if I'm bringing in, um, you know, very little revenue. And for me right now, frankly, for myself and the clients that I advise, you know, our suggestion is if, you know, if you can finish out 2020 with a break even or 0% gain, 0% loss, then you have really, really, really slipped through, uh, you know, a, a minefield untouched. Um, I don't envision most schools being able to do that, but if you took advantage of the PPP loan and you have a nice lender or perhaps an SBA loan that was paid or uh, I hope I said landlord, not lender, uh, but maybe landlord or lender, um, you know, you've been able to defer some debts, um, you know, your landlord or, or, or mortgage uh, broker or mortgage bank has been able to defer or even waive some payments for you and you're able to collect a little bit of revenue um, to get you through some times. If you can get by at zero, or even squeak out just a few percentages of profit, then again, you have really been successful. Uh, my goal, frankly, this year personally with the investments that I have is in the gymnastics and swim world are to just make a break even. Um, I do believe uh, I'll be able to get there. Um, I'm not overly concerned at this stage if something were to happen, like, you know, we have a second spike in, in the fall or something like that, then I might have a different perspective. But at this end, um, my uh, medium and long-term planning, which gets me through the end of 2020, that's where, I'm, that's where I'm headed. Okay, so as it comes to those expenses that I just showed, you know, now I'm gonna kind of dip into a little bit of detail here. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly. Most of you are self-explanatory and everyone has different expenses. Um, but what I've done is, uh, you know, I've kind of taken a look at my internal business, but also many of my clients that I've worked with, we've just been tracking some things that we have um, variability or we have control over. So I thought I would share some of those with you guys. So first and foremost, that's what you want to do is you want to start again. Uh, for me, it was easy. I pulled out my profit and loss and I went line by line and I crossed out anything that was discretionary and the things I could cut immediately, you know, travel dues and subscriptions, marketing and advertising. There were no more additional equipment purchases, office and other types of supplies, with the exception of cleaners and agents and things of that nature. Uh, merchant and bank fees, those are obviously uh, variable based on my revenue. So if my revenue is zero, my merchant fees were pretty close to zero. Um, and, and again, you're gonna have a little bit of these things, um, but in large scale, most of these, these discretionary items are gone that I have control over. Um, similarly with insurance, it's been an opportunity for me to look at all the insurance coverage I have. Am I overinsured? Am I underinsured? Do I have the right types of insurance? I was able to get a waiver from my insurance broker. Um, if I'm not open, uh, you know, they immediately cut all sorts of insurance fees for me. Um, I've also asked for deferment of insurance costs because I pay as you go. I don't I don't do one lump sum. I pay uh, four times throughout the year. So I've asked to defer some payments on that. Um, essential repairs to the facility, or I should say, I only will be doing essential or recommending doing essential repairs to the facility. Obviously, if the water pipe breaks and I got a big flood in my in my waiting room, I can't say, well, too bad. I'm not going to bring the plumber in. I clearly have to do that. Um, I did use my staff, especially with my PPP funding, to take care of some repairs, some cleaning, um, some reorganization. We did some painting. Um, so, I, so I used those dollars as an opportunity to take care of some things that I, I envision short and long term that I'll need. Um, and then similarly with the utilities. You know, most of my utilities have been, you know, we've dropped, we don't have a, our heat bill now luckily is off. Um, our, our electricity, we've opened up anything, any external doors or garage doors. So we're trying to use as much natural light as possible. I've you know, unplugged 
uh, phantom devices so that we can get our utilities down to the lowest possible point that available to us. So be sure to take a look at your profit and loss statements and look at these items that are considered discretionary and start cutting those immediately. Um, the next thing we did was, was I looked at my cash reserves to determine how long I can survive without income. Now at the beginning, we did have little income coming in. Um, we had, we had uh, various ways we did that. I won't get into those now, but um, we did have some minimal income coming in. So it enabled me to prolong our um, uh, uh, need for additional external type financing. I did apply for the triple P myself. And again, I advised most, if not all of my clients to do that when it made sense. And those dollars came in, which helped me with some rent and some utility payments and helped me with payroll costs. Um, so I've really been able to manage nicely my May, and, or I should say second half of April. Um, you know, for me, it'll be about mid-April to mid-June that everything that I have is pretty much taking care of what I need. Um, with that, I was able, again, to determine and to create best and worst case scenarios. Um, I was able to last 90 days without issue. Um, so I'm in that good shape category. Uh, but if you don't think you can survive 90 days, then you might want to look uh, for additional bridge or line of credit funding and get those in place as soon as you can. Um, I do want to caution you, though, um, if your business is traditionally non-profitable in the good times, and uh, now granted, if you just opened up your business last year, that would be a different situation. But if you've been in business for a while, and your business has uh, not really been able to turn a profit, then I would heavenly caution you about taking on a, additional debt. It might, um, uh, you know, might not be the best course of action. I would, I would again suggest that you speak with your professional advisors to ensure that that's the right thing to do. Okay, my second cost that I looked at was, uh, you know, I'm going to say, you know, pulling together whatever we could is we took a hard look at inventory and supplies. Um, fortunately for me. Most of my inventory is purchased on consignment. So I was not, and when I talk about inventory, I'm talking about leotards, swimsuits, um, goggles, things of that nature. Uh, I was able to quickly do, I had ordered some office supplies uh, from our vendor, which is Staples. And they were actually at the beginning willing to take the money back, uh, take our most recent order back. It was only $1,100, but $1,100 was $1,100, and I got 100% credit for it back on my credit card, or we have an account with them. Um, so I would, uh, I would first ensure, first and foremost, make sure you're not replenishing anything inventory-wise. Um, anything that you can return for cash, uh, you know, certainly look to do that. Um, we did have some items left over that we considered selling at a discount. I didn't need to do that at this point. Um, I've chosen not to, but if you're in a different scenario, you might want to consider unloading some things um, to raise cash if needed, especially if you have a lot of inventory. Um, and then I don't have any leased equipment personally, but I do have a lot of clients that do. We've asked if they could return some of that equipment. Uh, we've considered selling off some of that equipment. And um, for those that uh, that didn't make sense, we've we've asked the lender if they would consider deferring payments or skipping payments altogether. And we've been successful in some and not successful in others, but you have to ask. The next thing is uh, negotiating debt obligations and rent. Um, for those of you that uh, have been paying attention to the news, there were a lot of relief programs that have been put in place. Um, you know, first and foremost, if you have an SBA loan, the SBA actually stepped in and made six months of payments on your behalf. So that, sir, I do not have a uh, personally an SBA loan, but I do have a lot of clients that do. So that was fantastic for them. Um, the bank is offered many banks. If you have a mortgage, we're offering relief, um, not only business wise, but also personally, if you have a home mortgage. So I would encourage you to do that. Reach out to those lenders. Um, and then <clears throat> if you haven't reached out to your landlord, you should do so immediately. Um, I think, uh, that's something we did day one. Um, we were honest with our landlord. We we told him we were going to apply for the triple P and uh, any money that we receive for rent would obviously give to to the, the company. Um, and, and we will exhaust all options before skipping any payments. However, um, I fully anticipated and I am now at a point where I have to ask for deferment 
And I've been doing that on behalf of myself, but also on behalf of many clients. Um, and it's important that you go in with, you know, a request. Um, I think the more definitive and decisive you can be and specific, uh, the more they might be willing to listen. So, you know, there's really a million options here. I just listed a few. You might say something like, can I have three months of rent forgiveness, but I'm willing to um, extend my contract terms. Uh, you know, maybe I'm at a five-year lease and I'm only got a year or two left. I'm willing to add uh, three or six months to the end if you're willing to forgive a few months of, of rent for me. Um, now, think about it. If, if your landlord had six months of SBA payments being made on his or her behalf, and you're asking for three months of forgiveness, which they were received, they received from the SBA, this might be a win-win for your landlord. You might ask for four months of deferment. And uh, if you're willing to, you know, let's assume your, you know, your lease is $10,000 a month. You might say, can I uh, skip four months and I'll take that 40 grand that I owe you and I'll, uh, I'll divide it up amongst a two year, a two year period and I'll pay you a little bit each month you know, extra. Or how about if I'm willing to pay you half of my rent for the next six months, um, and then I will uh, I'll pay the remaining half over an 18-month period or a 36-month period or whatever you want. So again, uh, use your creativity here. Um, sometimes you ask for partial payment. Sometimes you ask for deferment. Sometimes you ask for complete forgiveness. But again, you can be as creative as you want, and, and hopefully your landlords are willing to listen. Now is also a great time to evaluate your rent. Um, you know, are you renting too much space? Are you paying too much money for your space? Um, many tenants have moved to virtual and will actually consider being virtual in the future. I uh, rent my accounting and tax office resides in a, in a strip mall in uh, Massachusetts. And we've got a lot of vendors here. Um, uh, and uh, some of these vendors will likely not return. So uh, my landlord's probably, if I went to my landlord with some some specifics or some request here, she might be willing to be flexible because uh, some of the companies that are here will not return. So um, again, just keep that in mind. Uh, I, and I'm not the type of person to pay hardball with anyone, um, but certainly I will use, you know, I, I will ask for something reasonable and I would anticipate or hope that, you know, a reasonable response would be received. When it comes to rent, you know, it's important. You know, this would be a typical, this is a, a million dollar a year company. Um, and and uh, or I think it's technically 900,000, and rent traditionally should be in that 20% factor, like I mentioned. So if you just look at it pictorially here, you know, in a normal world, you know, you, you know, you've got January, February, March, April, really, really strong months. May starts to die out a bit, and then obviously we hit the summer, and the gymnastics and the dance world, swimming might be flipped a little bit upside down, um, and many times the revenue that we bring in in a good case might not even be able to cover our rent and then we get back into the you know when school season reopens september october november december where our months start getting stronger again so it's important that you have an understanding of what your run your your monthly rent is and uh, you know these expenses are, are going to be obviously difficult to get away from but uh, again it, it's something that you should be considering and always thinking about uh, next, in terms of managing costs, is consider outsourcing. Um, as the owner of a payroll provider and a payroll service, I can tell you that the number one service that is outsourced is payroll. Um, small business owners can uh, save uh, anywhere from 20 to 50 percent. You know, I, I'll tell you, our service, which is full service, offers the same service you get from the large national providers. Um, those folks uh, were typically half the cost of, of those services. I don't have my name on the side of a, a football stadium yet. Um, I don't have, uh, you know, a Rolls Bowl or anything like that named after my company. So you're not paying for that. Um, you're paying for just the service. Um, so I don't drop off fancy gifts to my clients that cost thousands of dollars and then build them into my the uh, my prospects. I don't I don't drop off fancy gifts and then build them into the cost of the people who are doing business with me. Uh, you know, we give you everything you need, but we don't give you any. Uh, you know, I, I don't take uh, again. We 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 keep it to the to what's needed and nothing extra. No no extra frills. Um, so make sure you're checking prices on things like that. Um, outsourcing IT services. Uh, I would say the same. You know, there's a lot of large providers out there offering services, 
And, um, you know, I'm, I'm much more the type of person who, who wants my service than I need, and I want to pay a fair price, but I'm not willing to pay uh, to have you sponsor a football team or, uh, or, or a, a, a race car that drives around in circles. Um, so always be looking at your vendors and who you're working with. Outsource of cleaning service and maintenance. That's something that I use. And when I had a shutdown immediately is I was able to reduce and now completely eliminate my services. Bookkeeping services. Uh, this is also very heavily outsourced. I don't do it internally. I have my books managed externally. Now, fortunately for me, I also provide bookkeeping services, but my bookkeeping services, all the companies that I'm affiliated with are external, meaning um, it's not in-house people. So uh, many of my clients needed to uh, put bookkeeping services on hold, and we were able to do that with them. They do not owe me money if they're not using the service. Um, some of them wanted the service, but want to delay or defer payments. We were able to do that. Again, uh, something to consider to help save you money and time. Marketing and advertising, human resources. Um, those are all items that we outsource. <clears throat> and um, again, when I don't need the service, I'm able to shut it off and not spend any money on it. And similarly, virtual assistants. Um, you know, for our, we're a Jackrabbit user, facilities that we own <clears throat> and our assistants are virtual, <clears throat> meaning they are not on site. So um, something to consider, uh, you know, for you, how, how you reopen and reshape your business going forward. These are certainly things that, you know, you should keep in mind as well. Next would be payroll scheduling. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, making sure to keep your payroll percentages in line. You know, <clears throat> dance schools, gymnastic schools, and swim schools typically run in that 35 to 45 percent of revenue. Um, but what the new norm should be, you know, right now I'm uh, looking to advise clients to if you're if you're um, <clears throat> bringing back businesses uh, slowly, <clears throat> you know, you're reopening, but you're not bringing in the same number of people. We're advising clients to relook at these percentages and make sure what makes sense for them. Maximizing of your ratios. And again, I always bring back classes strategically. Um, what we're doing with many of our clients is suggesting only opening during peak times. <clears throat> Therefore, not having staff on all, but only during those peak times when classes are full. Optimizing your benefits. Uh, if you have benefits that you offer, employee benefits, make sure to work with a broker. He or she can help with um, the current benefits that you offer, maybe offer suggestions on ways to reduce money. Um, eliminating some uh, <clears throat> uh, benefits that you offer. Here's a few that I have named. Um, reducing employee hours and aligning to your demand. Again, it's, it's still different than scheduling. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're likely not gonna open up uh, or advise to our clients to open up seven days a week. We're gonna talk about shrinking that to two or three or four days at most. <clears throat> we are going to um, convert some of our full-time people or suggest that to part-time people. Uh, cutting salary and pay rates for management. For those of that you that maybe have friends or spouses or loved ones that are in the corporate world, many of you ha might have been under, uh, have been aware <clears throat> that large organizations that have not experienced much difficulty at all during this outbreak have asked senior management and se and salaried individuals to take pay cuts. Uh, <clears throat> my wife works at a very large employer, publicly traded company. They're open through the entire pandemic. And everyone on their entire corporate staff has had a five to 10, in some instances, depending upon your level, 20, 25% salary reduction. So it wouldn't be uncommon for uh, you know, folks in our industry to do the same. Consider rotating furlough or job sharing, open at peak hours only, eliminating training and non-essential work or unprofitable classes, private lesson consideration. <clears throat> you know, is this something that you're gonna reopen up your business in my swim school, for example, we're no longer going to open under a group lesson model. We're going to open up in a private lesson model. The lessons will be 10 minutes in length <clears throat> rather than the typical 30. Um, that wouldn't work, for example, with gymnastics, <clears throat> but it's certainly something to consider. And we are also talking about adding more private lessons to our schedule than we normally have. Layoffs as a last resort. <clears throat> um, remember, unemployment still exists for employees. Uh, it will be expensive to fill these vacancies in the future, but again, if it's a last resort and you have to do it, then go ahead. 
Make sure you consider the long-term potential of the staff that you're keeping, you know, who has better culture fit, who has better education, who's got more experience. And then I would make sure you always perform a critical skills assessment to make your decisions um, and eliminating any type of duplicate roles that may exist. And with that, if you think about it again, if this was your pie chart or your allocation of income before the pandemic, you know, what would it look like in the future? Here's kind of what I'm trying to temporarily target <clears throat> that about, you know, instead of having, as you can look here, 20% in rent and 40% in labor, <clears throat> I'm trying to get my 20% normal reduced down to 17%. And I'm trying to get my 40% labor normal reduced down to 10%. Now, it's important that you, again, for me, and I would advise this to everyone, how much money do you really need to remain open? You know, for me, covering my rent um, and some minor utilities, I could be pretty much clear. Now, rent happens to be a big number for me, <clears throat> um, and you need to consider the same, but you really want to make sure you understand and know how much money it costs for you, how much you truly need to keep to remain open. I do have some quick bullets here that I'm going to just pass through, but everyone will get this as a PDF. Again, just some other things to consider in terms of managing your costs. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about before I get into a quick offer is, <clears throat> and then questions, is you know now once we reopen, it's important to remember what you offered people at the beginning. I'll go back a slide. You know, we did offer and advise to many clients at the beginning that if you paid, you know, April tuition, we would turn this into makeups or open gyms. We would consider crediting towards future classes. So you need to make sure that you make good on these promises to make sure you keep your clients happy and keep them coming back. But then other things to consider is, you know, revamp your, your business model. Really consider that. You know, <clears throat> we're moving to smaller class sizes. We're advising folks to take a look at private lesson models. We're offering and suggesting to many people virtual and live mixture in the next when they come live. You know, I was um, working with many of my dance schools, for example, <clears throat> and suggesting to them, uh, you know, in the fall, if you want to come back and you only want to stay virtual, well, we'll all let you take the class virtually for a 10 or 20 percent discount. If you want to come into the studio, then, of course, you full freight. The other. <clears throat> so consider something like that. People may not want to come back as regularly. So you might want to consider how you're structuring those. Um, <clears throat> we're offering uh, in the dance world, we're suggesting to clients, you know, consider something different, streaming different teachers, different ideas, different revenue streams. We are planning to have and launch the best summer that we're ever going to have. My, I'm in full belief that these, that we will come out of this pandemic and open up and we will be uh, looking, people will be itching to do, 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 to do things. Kids have been at home, kids have been uh, zoomed out, if you will. <clears throat> so we are offering additional rev revenue streams that we normally wouldn't. We, we've always had a summer camp. We will be offering and advertising the heck out of summer camp. We're going to move into offering daycare type services, but we're not turning ourselves into a daycare center. We're offering tutoring, which we've never done before. <clears throat> we're going to start offering child and young adult fitness. Um, <clears throat> we're offering alternative days and hours. We're going to be on days and times that we don't normally work um, and anything else, and other businesses that may need space that may have considered closing. We're offering our uh, facility space to them to consider sub partnering with us. So always be thinking about different things and how you can do your model. And with that, I, um, I, I'm going to move to questions and answers. But before I do so, I do have a special offer for those of you <clears throat> that are listening. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that we're doing as a, as a company, as I mentioned, is we are going to redeploy ourselves and remarket ourselves for the fall, or sorry, for the summer. So in doing that, we will go through a massive campaign to take, uh, to revamp our business, revamp our marketing, and getting ourselves on the top of Google, getting ourselves on the, on the top of search engines organically. Um, we have a team here that does this. I do it regularly. My, my bit, part of my business is flipping businesses. So we buy them, turn them around and sell them. And uh, I'm going to offer a special offer here. If anyone is interested in, I'll say, joining me and repositioning your own selves, I'm going to open up a free business. This is part of our business coaching. This is a segment of what we do for business coaching. And I'm going to offer, the, uh, offer for the first 50 people that contact me at this email, Sean at Deaver CPA. Um, <clears throat> we will be having weekly meetings. You'll be required to attend. They will be in Zoom format. <clears throat> you must be willing to help your others. 
and we'll do it for four weeks. And again, what we will be doing here is revamping your marketing and advertising to get you positioned for the new summer. And with that, uh, Amber, if you're still there, and then so I'm gonna leave this here, and then if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'll also throw my contact at the end. But uh, Amber, did we have questions that you wanted me to tackle? Yeah, we have a couple and actually had some that were submitted ahead of time. I think everyone, including myself, have been jotting down a lot of notes, um, lots of good stuff, and I'm getting some of those comments in the chat section. So it seems like everybody really appreciated all of this information. So thank you first and foremost for doing this for us. Um, let's start with the ones that were submitted ahead of time, just so I don't lose those. Um, what basic spreadsheets would you suggest we use to keep track of how long we can sustain this? So this, uh, you know, we do nothing fancy. We use uh, Excel. Um, you know, we, we uh, have our, our, our books and our finances are maintained and for all of our clients in some form of either QuickBooks desktop or QuickBooks online. We take that information, <clears throat> summer, put it into a little more summary format, and then we just use Excel as a modeling tool. Awesome. And then the other one that was submitted, private lessons would be great, but especially virtually. Um, with Safe Sport, we can't really offer them correct. And this might be coming from a webinar that we had last week with uh, Safe Sport and Spot TV, where there was concern about um, the liability of private lessons with the Safe Sport policy. So I don't know if you want yeah, to speak to that you, at all. Yeah, I, I'm probably not the best guy to answer that. I will tell you, frankly, um, Safe Sport is irrelevant to me if my business doesn't exist in the future. So for me right now, this is a matter, uh, you know, they can exempt me from going to any meets or competitions, but guess what? There are no meets and competitions. So I'm willing to fall out of, we're not doing anything to harm anyone. If my insurance provider, my lawyer allows it, that's the overarching uh, watermark for me. Again, I'm not telling anyone to, you know, to do anything crazy or do anything illegal, but <clears throat> for me, if I'm not open, safe sport uh, isn't going to matter. So for me, it's again about generating revenue. Okay, awesome. Um, Peter is asking, with the changes in percentages for the new normal, does your profit percentage from that 10%? Uh, my pro I'm not sure what that I'm not sure that uh, what that question means. But with the new normal, my profit percentage normally would be 10 percent. Uh, or I should say this: normally in these industries, profits run about 10 percent. If you're in the if you're in the gym and the dance world, if you're in the swim world, we'll see sometimes 15. To, we'll see 15, and we'll see even as high as 20. <clears throat> Um, that's in the normal world. In in the current world, my goal is to just get everyone to zero or higher. All right, and a follow-up question from Peter. The three to four day work week, is that just for admin and management positions or the entire facility? Yeah, great question for me. The three to four, you know, what we're gonna do is we are going to, uh, we're not gonna reopen our facilities or suggest to our clients to reopen our facilities in a seven day a week fashion. We are going to do our best to have um, you know, and, and very similarly, we're also not going to open from, you know, eight in the morning till eight at night. If, you know, looking at our, our demand, if it's from four to seven, uh, people are interested in coming back to classes four to seven on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only. Well, then those are the classes that we're going to offer so that our ratios are full. We are going to expand or widen our ratios a little bit. Um, and it's a little bit counterintuitive to, I'm, I'm not suggesting we're going to cram more people into a smaller area. We're going to give them, you know, equal distance space, you know, so we're safe from that perspective. But from a teacher to student ratio, we will, um, we will be looking to expand those. Um, as many of us are aware, you know, we won't be having a lot of more hands-on contact, <clears throat> things of that nature. In the swim world, most of my clients run four to one. In the gym world, most of my clients run eight to one. And again, we'll look to potentially expand those slightly. Great. And then Lisa has a question about your special offer. If we are one of the 50, do we have to pay in after the four weeks? Absolutely not, Lisa. This is a, um, something I've never done before. Um, you, you know, at this point in time, my goal really is, is I'm, I'm just being candid, two, twofold. Number one, um, these industries mean the world to me, not only business-wise, but professionally, but, you know, personally. 
um, uh, I, uh, I, I am trying to do everything I can to help as many people as possible. Um, so that's really the genesis for me doing this. I've also created a Facebook group and a Facebook page and so on. Um, and then, and then Lisa, just selfishly, um, you were, if, if you're one of the 50 people you are going, as I mentioned here in my fourth bullet point, you will be helping me drive my business. And in exchange, I'll be helping you. So I'm not offering to pay you money, but I'm also not willing to take your money. Um, if you find that you're interested in something like this and you want to talk about long-term coaching, we're not even, um, we're happy to talk about it after the fact, but that's, there's no cost, no obligation required. If you want to talk about it further, just drop me an email. Awesome. Um, much appreciated. Your expertise in both the um, financial world and in the Youth Activity Center space is very much appreciated. So we've got a few more questions. Um, Lauren is saying, thank you for your help. Can you tell me exactly what is covered under the, the utilities with the PPP loan? Electricity, water, gas, trash, phones, internet? Yep, with the PPP is electric, gas, internet, phone, but it's landline only. It's not including cell phones. And uh, that's it. Okay, very good. Uh, Laura's asking, are you adding time between classes for cleaning? Are you increasing tuition to cover these costs? Great question. We are adding a, we are adding um, time to the schedule in between classes. It's not very much time because I don't want to, for me, everything scheduling wise is imperative that we get people in and out as fast as possible so that we're absorbing our payroll, you know, to its fullest. Um, we are, however, you know, we're not allowing parents into the facilities and suggesting the same for our clients. So there will be time in there to get kids, you know, into their cars and out of their cars and so on. Um, that will eat into the, you know, if, if you have an hour for normally our hours or schedules are an hour, we'll be ending classes five to 10 minutes early. We are not putting an extra 10 or 15 minutes in between the calendar. Um, we're, we're cutting it out of their class time, uh, again, so that I can realize full and maximum payroll percentages. Um, I am not offering a coronavirus free uh, fee. Uh, a lot of vendors are doing that, not something I'm doing at the current time. All right. From Carol, if you pay rent with TripleNet, do you suggest to landlord that would both be deferred? Yes, it, it defer as much as you can. Um, in some instances, I've heard landlords say, listen, if you're willing to pay the CAM, the common area maintenance costs, I'm willing to defer the rent or vice versa or some alteration of that. But go in, swing in for the stars, uh, and then you know get what you can get. <laughs> Beg, borrow, and plead as much as you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, next one. In addition to the coaching group, can we still schedule an appointment with you to review financials? I believe I have heard you speak of this in another meeting. Yes, we uh, I do offer consulting in various aspects. So happy to uh, just reach out to me and we can talk uh, further. Awesome. Uh, next one from Cheryl. Can you explain how the 10000 advance works with the PPP? Uh, if you receive the $10,000 advance and a PPP, then the $10,000 advance will turn into a loan. All right. Well, it looks like that was it. And we're ending just three minutes over. So awesome. um, on behalf of all of our attendees, I say thank you, Sean, for doing this for us. And on behalf of me, Sean, and Tammy, I thank you all for joining us today. And we will be in touch with some resources and recording for you. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody.